Hello friends, this video on friction part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now before we talk about ball bearing, we would like to introduce you to rolling friction. The way we have discussed about static friction, sliding friction, in a similar way we are now going to introduce rolling friction. So it is the force of friction that acts between an object rolling over surface of another object. Now what do we mean by rolling over? We will take the same example of car. So you remember as long as the car was at rest but you are applying a force but still the car is at rest. That means static friction is acting on the car. Now, As soon as this car starts moving, what's happening? sliding friction was acting on the car. Now how is sliding friction different from rolling friction? So let us have a close look. When we talk about sliding, we are just talking about one object sliding over another object. Let us suppose this wheel, if I say the wheel is sliding over the surface, that means the wheel is just moving like this. So it is just sliding on the surface. When I say that the wheel is rolling, that means the wheel is sliding but at the same time it is rolling also. So it is rotating like this as you can see here. So that is the difference between sliding and rolling. Now how rolling friction helps, I mean how rolling friction helps to reduce friction. Now in this case if you see, if you remember I talked about static friction, sliding friction and now I have introduced rolling friction. So I'll just compare the three. So in case of static friction, what happened? The object was at rest. Now when the object is at rest, the interlocking is maximum because the surface of the wheel and the surface of the floor which are in contact, they are like absolutely in touch with each other. So in this case, there is maximum interlocking. So the interlocking is max. Now since the interlocking is maximum, therefore friction is also maximum. Now what happens in case of sliding? Now when the object is sliding, in that case, now as the object is changing its position from one place to another, so this much is the surface of contact. So this is the area of contact. This much part of the, the wheel is in touch with the floor. But Oh, I mean this surface is not remaining in touch for a longer period because it is changing its position from one place to another. So therefore in this case interlocking is less. Therefore friction is also less. Now let us talk about rolling. What happens in rolling? In case of rolling, if you want we will show it once again. So just observe what's happening here. Now here the wheel itself is moving like this. So that means if at every instant of time there is just one point on the wheel which is in touch with the ground. So at every instant there is one different point which is in contact with the surface. So that means in this case at least this much portion was in touch with the surface because it is moving, it is just sliding, it is not rolling. But when it is rolling it is just one point and that to one different point every time. So this one point which is in contact with the uh, floor, that point is also changing. So just imagine in this case there is no interlocking at all. So you can say that almost no interlocking takes place in this case and therefore the friction offered during rolling is also negligible because in this case only one point is in contact with the surface at a time. So one point in contact with surface at a particular time. So because of this, the interlocking is minimum or you can say that almost zero. So interlocking is minimum and therefore friction is also minimum. So rolling is another way of reducing friction and that is why it is said that wheels were one of the best inventions to help the mankind because when wheels were uh, invented after that there were many jobs which became very easy so i will give you one example how rolling helps us to reduce friction and how that helps human beings so we understood that rolling reduces friction so as i said let me now give a quick recap and let me take an example to show you that how rolling can help in reducing friction and how that can help us that is human beings now let us suppose you have a big box Okay, so this box is right now at rest. 
okay in the next scenario you have the same big box but now the box is sliding so in this case the box is sliding and you have a third scenario where you have the same big box but now you have wheels attached to the box so in this case the box is rolling now here i mean it is you who has to move this box so in the first case let us suppose this is you so in the first case you are applying force to the box but the box is still not moving so even though you are applying a force f there is a frictional force which is static friction due to which the box is not moving now after some time when capital f is greater than static friction then the box starts moving so in this case what do you do you apply a force from the side and that's how the box is sliding here but here comparatively the friction is lesser when compared to the first scenario so this is first this is second and this is third in the third case what happens here also you are pushing the box but since you have the wheels you just need to apply very less force so very less applied force in the third scenario here applied force is needed and what about this here maximum applied force so here you have to apply maximum force why because in this case you have maximum friction in this case you have less friction and in this case you have minimum friction so since you have minimum friction so you have to apply minimum force to make this object move so that is why it has become very easy to transport objects from one place to another because whatever heavy objects you have to transport why do you want to apply more force or why do you want to tire yourself to move it you just put wheels on those objects and then you can reduce your effort so that is how wheels turned out to be one of the best inventions which helped the mankind because with the help of wheels only we were able to come up with so many different types of vehicles so many different types of uh, vehicles to carry the loads for transportation and that's how made our work easier so now that we discussed about rolling friction i think it will be better to understand uh, ball bearings so let us see what are ball bearings so these ball bearings are small steel balls which are placed between rotating parts of machines now as i was telling you before also that if you have parts inside your machine where one part is rotating over another so the outer part which you see here is the fixed part so this outer circle which you see is the fixed one and the inside one is the rotating one now just imagine in case there were no balls so in that case this rotating part will be rotating on the fixed part so a lot of friction will be involved so a lot of heat will get produced so a lot of energy wastage will be involved so that is why what is done is steel balls are being placed in between the these two parts so now what will happen as one part moves so let us suppose that this rotating part the inside one is moving now as this moves these balls which are present here these balls will start rolling so as this as the inside part moves with respect to the outside part the balls will start rolling on the two parts now when the balls are rolling what is involved only rolling is involved right so here in this case due to the presence of these balls only rolling is involved there is no static friction involved there is no sliding friction involved sliding friction obviously is not there because now these two surfaces are not in touch had these balls not been there then sliding friction would have been involved and sliding friction is a lot more than that of rolling friction but now since the balls are rolling only rolling friction is involved and we know that rolling friction is quite small when compared to static friction or sliding friction so rolling friction being very small 
so what will happen since friction is very small therefore the energy loss is also very small so in this case there is very small energy loss so this ball bearing arrangement is used in various parts of the machineries in order to reduce the energy loss so this is also a very efficient way of reducing friction so some of the advantages of using ball bearings is reduce energy loss reduce wear and tear now when energy loss is reduced friction is reduced friction is reduced wear and tear is reduced because had this not been there these two would have been always uh, sliding against each other so their wear and tear would have been more frequent and more probable now as i have mentioned before also please do remember that every time we are talking about reducing friction so do you think that we can reduce friction to zero can we make friction zero that is not possible that's because had friction been zero then the surface would have been a perfectly smooth surface which doesn't exist in reality so friction can never be reduced to zero even the most smooth surfaces which appear to be smooth even they have irregularities on their surface so if you look at a very smooth surface where you feel that everything moves so smoothly that it cannot have irregularities but when you observe it minutely even they will also have irregularities and they are also not perfectly smooth so friction can never be zero so this is how it will look like so irregularities will always be there so these are the irregularities so friction will always be greater than zero thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again